Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. The topic for today is Gran Turismo 7 and more in depth how this is different from GT Sport. No matter how much I like Gran Turismo Sport, it is undeniable that it was only half a game, especially when compared to the earlier versions. The only thing I spent my time on there was the multiplayer aspect and creating some liveries. Not especially because I'm such a competitive guy, but because there was simply no decent mode for single player races. The AI used in Gran Turismo Sport were a bunch of empty shells that were not even particularly good in driving either and were no real competition if you ever played a race game before. For many people that just want to have some fun driving races, you either had the choice of winning all races and not being challenged at all or having to take it more seriously, practice, do qualifications and hope you don't get taken out on uh, the first corner when you actually get in a race. There was no real in-between. But now, there is Gran Turismo 7, a game in the franchise with the number as a suffix as it should. To start off with what in my opinion is the biggest improvement, the AI. The AI comes in three different flavors, so there is plenty of a challenge for people just starting sim racing and those that are already a bit more seasoned. I started out at the medium for the first few races and then switched to the hardest AI and I have to say that the AI truly gives you a bit of a challenge. Just by adding this, Gran Turismo broadened its target group a lot, including some of my friends that were yeah, very unhappy with the lack of a decent multiplayer in the previous installment. Unfortunately, the game does require you to be online even for campaign mode. If this is good or bad, well, I won't go into that discussion. So the improved AI is the main, but not the only point where the new Gran Turismo scores well. You have the upgraded graphics, the in my eyes largely sufficient car selection and tracks, the tuning is also back and well, you have GT Cafe. Where the licenses give you an insight on tracks, how to corner and what the fastest line is, the cafe focuses more on the cars themselves. It is a perfect learning school for getting to know various types of cars and drivetrains, how different cars react on different tracks and so on. In GT Sport I never really learned how to properly drive a rear wheel driven car. Now I have raced already different races with it because I just wanted to advance in the cafe. And you get a history lesson along the way. I know that this isn't everyone's favorite, but I like history in general, so for me it is fascinating. The cafe is also used to introduce the rest of the game, showing the various aspects of Gran Turismo in a fun way. The third big difference I need to talk about is the weather. Absolutely amazing. The rain, the progression of the day during the race, the stars. I talk about immersion a lot in my videos and this is one of the most brilliant additions for people that just play the game because they love the ride. In the new Gran Turismo you can actually drive into the sunset. The changing weather adds not only to the reality but also makes races more about tactics. Now in addition to the two pit stops because of mandatory tire type type changes, you may also have to pit in to get rain tires. The rain also gradually changes how your car reacts on the road and this is also not seen before. Again, what an asset for the racing experience in general. Something that has not changed or changed little is the livery editor and scapes. They differ very little from GT Sport but they were then already such a wonderful addition to the game that I just feel obligated to mention them anyhow. So the bottom line? If I look on Reddit, I see sometimes denigrating remarks about Gran Turismo being a sim case and granted the physics and racing aspect can be better represented in other games, but that is not what makes a game a hit. Gran Turismo Sport focused only on the goal of being a platform for esports. Gran Turismo 7 will not just give you this platform, but will also be carefully guiding you in a way to get to this platform. And if you just want to race competitively on your own, that's fine too. It's just such a complete game. People of Polyphony Digital and Cass, you did an excellent job on this game. I know I have left out a lot of new improvements, but of course this is not meant as a review, just an opinion. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. See you all next video.